In Investing 101 today, Dave Bartosiak of Zacks.com joins us now to talk about investing in momentum stocks. Should you or shouldn't you? Good to have you here. Good to be here. So people get really caught up in, oh, my neighbor bought this stock and it's going higher like crazy. I want to buy it now. Sure. Good plan? Um, it depends. So, uh, of course, everybody loves talking about momentum stocks because these are the sexy things that are in the news. Um, it's, you know, the stock that's popping higher because of some new drug that came out. It's, uh, you know, new technology. It's, it's the one that everybody wants to get in on, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that you should be rolling the dice on this. But there is a way to play these stocks. Ah, what would you do as a professional? So the way to do it is I, I take a look at who's making new highs in terms of 52-week highs. That's a great place to start. So you can find that on pretty much any website. Um, back in the day, you know, we used to see that in the newspaper. Right? <laughs> back in the day, that's <laughs> back true. Back in the day, that's, that's where we would dig it out. But new 52-week highs. So you take that list and you start to see kind of what sectors are sort of popping up, right? So if you okay. look at all the names, you'll find, you'll end up getting a feel for what sort of the hot sector is. What I do is I like to take a look at the hottest sector and then I look for some of the hottest stocks within that hottest sector. Oh, okay. Because what that's telling me is that it's not just a one-off, it's not just this one stock that um, is running away on its own. It tells me that maybe there's something economically, there's some trend that's developing within this sector or this industry um, that could be good. So it kind of takes out some of the guesswork for me and lets me kind of zero in on something that's going to be great. So then once I have that, then I actually do look at some of the fundamentals. And that sounds crazy when you're talking about a momentum stock, um, but I actually like to take a look and make sure I'm not buying something that's just a fly-by-night. Well, you have to do your homework. Sure, absolutely, with all of this, you gotta right. do your homework. Um, so it, it doesn't matter, however you wanna do your fundamental analysis is up to you. Um, I kinda cheat, because over at Zach's we've got a rating system, so it makes it easy for me. Um, so I'll pick the highest rated stocks that are breaking out to new highs, and then I look at the chart, okay? So um, not all charts are created equal, okay? Right. So what you wanna look for is not necessarily the chart that's just a huge spike up, um, because that could be a huge spike down in the very near future, okay? Especially the way that stocks trade nowadays with the algorithmic trading and all that. Um, sometimes something that gets spiked gets faded right away just for the sake of being faded. Right, because the computers will trigger certain stocks to go up and you never want to get caught in a computer trade. Absolutely. Because the computer, the machine, will win. They it will, will win. take your money. They will chop you up and they'll get you. So what I like to look for in a momentum stock is something that has been creeping up over time. Um, so that's, that's definitely what you want to do. And then um, if you can, wait for a little bit of a pullback. So I'll use a moving average depending on what stock it is that will kind of set what moving average I use. Just pick the one that kind of fits the most, right? What kind of trend line is developing there? Wait till it pulls back to that and then that's when you go ahead and pull the trigger. Now something that is moving higher right now and is doing a slow grind higher happens to be the Russell 2000. Sure. The index is moving up. so. I know that sometimes shorts can be covering and lift the index up, but do you think this is a case of the shorts or a real rally that could be sustained happening here? I think it's a real sustained rally because I think we've seen a low and slow accumulation over time from the institutional money managers. I think they're putting that money back to work. I think the risk on trade is here. Um, of course, Friday morning, the jobs report was a little bit of a stinker. It was right? disappointing. It was disappointing, but you know, earnings is out of the way. We're yeah. looking forward you know, towards the next earnings cycle that's gonna come in. Um, energy's getting a lot better. Um, you know, retail is, we, we already forgot about retail, right? <laughs> I think retail is more of a structural thing. We're, we're, moving, we're moving away from bricks and then we're going to clicks, right? right. So right. it's more of an online thing. So, so things are changing there in retail. So anyway, I, I think it's a slower grind higher for the Russell here. Um, we're looking at what, 11, 1167, I think earlier mm -hmm. uh, on Friday. Mm -hmm. um, not really sure how it's gonna, you know, how it's gonna play out, but if you're looking at the Russell, 1205 is going to be kind of short-term resistance on the Russell. That's the highest from November, December of last year. So I think that's sort of your next stop on that. And after that, who knows? So you really want a slow-mo. Like you want a momentum, but a nice slow momentum. I like how you said it, the slow-mo. Yeah. I try. You know, there's no momentum like momentum. <laughs> and it's time for us to call this a moment that's over. Good to yeah. have you on the show. Good to be Please here. Please come back soon. Yeah, for sure.